You gave me two different ways of looking at these mm -hmm. percentages. So the first one was 33% of salary and production. And you were really just looking at, we need to know what these numbers are before we can discuss it. Right. So right. when you read that email from me, what was your first thought? I know you're like, okay, now I got to tell Teresa this, this. Let's, mm -hmm. just, let's just lay it out there. What did you need to correct in that so that we can make sure we're talking mm -hmm. about Apples and apples and oranges and all. One of the topics that you and I always talk about, of course, is the financial aspect of hygiene. And if we could move to that. So, mm -hmm. you know, we back and forth with email and then we always do the pregame and we always end up talking about this stuff anyways. But there's a lot of numbers that are thrown around for mm -hmm. production and what's good production and yeah. what's good pay. And, you know, it's like people, when people ask this question, they are taking one office that's located in generic America yes. on main street yes. with the generic number of employees. And it's so different across the board. So when I said to you, and this is what I sent to Rachel, I'll just read it. So is 33% of production still applicable, blah, blah, blah. And so we talked about that and she got on, she said, actually, let's talk about that 33%. And so you gave me two different ways of looking at these mm -hmm. percentages. So the first one was 33% of salary, 33%, I mean, salary and production. And you were really just looking at, we need to know what these numbers are before we can discuss it. Right. So right. when you read that email from me, what was your first thought? I know you're like, okay, now I got to tell Teresa this, this, let's mm -hmm. just, let's just lay it out there. What did you need to correct in that so that we can make sure we're talking mm -hmm. about apples and apples and oranges. And oranges. Okay. So there are several benchmarks that I would say are general benchmarks for a successful hygiene department. And like you said, it's all relative, right? So there mm -hmm. are variants. So we need to take certain things into account based on the practice. But for a general rule, the first thing that I thought was you said 33% of production. And I thought, okay, so is she talking about hygiene producing 33% of the total office production? <laughs> or is she talking about paying the hygienists 33% of their production? Right. So those right. are two very different <laughs> things, right? So let's cover both of them. Okay. So Good. from a lot of our dental CPA friends that we have close contact with over the years, one of the things that they want to see is hygiene producing 25 to 30% of the total office production. Now that I think held true and was a very fair benchmark when the general dentist was doing crown and bridge yeah. fillings and bread and butter dentistry and there was one you know dentist who had maybe two hygienists working with them in the practice things have changed a lot right in the last 10 to 20 years in dentistry particularly in the last 10 years mm -hmm. with super gps so super gp is a general dentist who has done additional training and is doing things like endodontics surgical yeah. procedures, placing implants, doing mm -hmm. full mouth rehabs. And those types of procedures can dramatically elevate the doctor's production because if you're doing a full mouth rehab, this could be a $60,000, $70,000 case. If you're doing an implant supported denture, that could be a $20,000 case, right? Or mm -hmm. more, depending on how many arches you're doing. So what we have seen is that it may be difficult for the hygienist to hit that same percentage of total office production if they're in a super GP environment, for example, mm -hmm. or if they have multiple doctors and maybe they have multiple doctors, but they don't have as many hygiene patients. And also the other thing though, for that benchmark that it is a trigger for is us to look at, again, we go back to the hygiene service mix. So it's very difficult if a doctor is doing high level procedures and the hygienist is still primarily doing adult prothes. Right. You know, that, right. that is something that I'm going to say on the high end in a fee for service practice you know, you're going to be able to produce if you take a set of bite wings and you do an adult profi at the high end, that's $200 mm -hmm. versus a doctor that's billing out $1,500 in an hour, possibly right. for a crown prep and a crown. So yeah. it's really hard to get those numbers to match up, right? And if you look at 30% of $1,500, it's about $500. So when we just do the math, it's getting more and more difficult. Now, it doesn't mean that it's impossible. Sure. And when we look at things like the hygienist expanding services to, to 
utilizing digital scanners and doing scans for bike arts mm -hmm. and whitening, utilizing the products that we mentioned today, making sure that they have a very robust periodontal diagnosis and treatment protocol. Mm -hmm. Hygienists can be very successful in a production from a production standpoint. I just feel like, yes, we can have that range, but let's look at the practice specifically before we make a judgment on how well the hygiene department is doing based on that number only. Yeah, that gap is just widening so yeah. much. And I feel like that number gets thrown around a lot, the 30% of, you know, and 33%, I mean, whatever group you're in, you get that number thrown a lot. So I just want to rephrase this for, again, some of the newbies that are listening or newer to managing the hygiene department. This benchmark was good back in the day when you mm -hmm. and I were coming up. That mm -hmm. was good because our doctors didn't do tons of implants all the time. Many of them referred out for everything, including yeah. end and perio. So it really was the true bread and butter. Yes. So that number, like you said, was good. The CPAs verified that it was good. CPAs, you know, and this is where I'm hearing it is CPAs are mm -hmm. saying this doesn't really work. And so we mm -hmm. need to get the message out. So if your hygienist is falling under that, but you have this super GP, maybe the problem is not that the hygienist is not producing enough. Maybe that's we, we need to really look at that. And mm -hmm. I think there's offices where hygienists won't push back and say, hey, this is a problem. And so we as managers have to be really fair and look at it from all angles. Mm -hmm. So I'm so glad that you brought that up because when I sent you that question, you know, I was rushing through and trying to dump all my thoughts on there. Yeah. That's actually where I was going with okay. that is, okay. you know, wh why do we keep sticking with this number? But in a regular bread and butter office, which there's nothing wrong with that, get yeah. a lot of same day dentistry done. If you're in that office, then maybe that number works. But most of us are not. Most of us have dentists that are improving their own service mix, right? Yes. And so I would say, I think it's okay for it to still be a benchmark and okay. for it to be a range. I would say the range is 25 to 30% of total office production. And okay. then if you fall into that category, or if you say, hey, we're at 22%, but we are a super GP, we're fine. Like that doesn't mean you stop investigating. It means there still could be opportunity to refine things in the hygiene department. It's just not a hard, fast rule, maybe the way that it used to be. And then if we take another look, and this could take us down a whole squirrel that I don't remember if we've done this yet, but we could do another podcast about it. But then if we look at hygienists being paid 33% of their net production, as yeah. a compensation model, that is another benchmark. And I would say that still should be a range. It still mm -hmm. should be that 25 to 33%, depending on, you know, is there a hygiene assistant? Like what is the overhead of the hygiene department? There's just different things to look at around that. You know, do okay. the hygienists have an hourly base in addition to some type of bonus over that? So that's a whole nother benchmark. And that's a really hot topic, right? One of the things I wanted to mention too, Teresa, that I think this might be a good time is every two months we do what's called a virtual growth forum. And we've done topics like hygiene compensation and, you know, incorporating alternative hygiene scheduling models like assisted hygiene. And so mm -hmm. I would encourage everybody to go to our website at inspiredhygiene.com. And two things, one is scroll down and look, you'll see a flyer for one of our upcoming growth forums. Um, so we do them every two months. So there's always one coming up and you'll see the mm -hmm. title of that. Register for that. It's completely free. I mean, it's just very educational, interactive. We love for people to share their experience and whatever the topic is that we're working on that day. And then the other thing is, you know, if you feel like there's room to elevate your hygiene department, create some solid systems, really get your team calibrated so that you can have a strong year, you know, reach out and book a discovery meeting. You'll see that on there and that will be with me. So we'd be happy to just chat with you about learning more about your practice and chat with you about your goals for hygiene and just see if there's a way that we might be able to help. Would you like to hear more? Follow the link for the full episode.